Hey everybody, it's Cheyenne and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is, can you trust your dentist? Now, this is a video I've thought about doing for a while now. Over the years of dental assisting, I've had quite a bit of patients come in and say that this dentist made them do this, but they weren't having any symptoms, or this dentist said I needed a root canal, but my tooth didn't hurt, or they put this crown on this tooth and I don't know why, or whatever it may be. And then also something that happened to me is when I was younger, probably about 19 or so, um, it had been a few years before I had a cleaning, I didn't have dental insurance, and I went to just a random office, and I got a checkup done and a cleaning and x-rays, and they had said I had four cavities. And I was really surprised because I've always taken really good care of my teeth, I had braces, you know, I've never really had much tooth decay in my life, and I paid full price out of pocket for each of these fillings, and they are about $300 a piece. And I ended up leaving or paying like $1,200 for my cleaning, my x-rays, and all these fillings that they had to do. And then when I went into dental assisting and I got my x-rays taken, I was told that I didn't have fillings on these teeth, that they were basically sealants that were placed. And I was really shocked. I was like, what? Because this dentist also told me that they were deep fillings and then if I had sensitivity to let him know, but I had no knowledge of anything. I just trusted what he said to me and I did it. But years, years, years later, of course, when I started learning about dentistry and I had seen the x-rays and I could see the fillings on the x-rays, nothing was really showing up. They didn't look deep at all. And I had my dentist tell me when I very first started dental assisting, when I got these x-rays done, he said these were kind of more like sealants that were placed that yes he did remove a little bit of tooth structure but he put sealant material so they weren't really fillings and they definitely shouldn't have been 300 something dollars a piece so that really got me thinking during well it made me look at things a certain way in the dental assisting field and as someone that's worked in private and clinic style offices I can see why some private dentists, not all, I'm not saying they all do this, but some private dentists, why they might force treatment on some patients because if they don't have money coming in, they don't have any money. They need a paycheck. So they might say that you need something done that you really don't. So this video is just my experience with that. And I want to explain some ways you can, if you're not knowledgeable in dental, just some things that can help you determine if you really need to get that done. Now, it's hard for you to really know for sure without an x-ray, and it's hard not to trust your dentist, but there are things that you do want to look for and not just completely trusting a dentist because, and I'm not saying you can't trust your dentist because either not all dentists, but some dentists in private offices might ask you to do work that you don't really need because they need money that month. So the most common one I've heard from patients is, I never had any pain with this tooth and I was told I needed to get a root canal done on it. So a tooth needs a root canal when the nerve inside the tooth has died. So sometimes there is pain with it. Usually it's hot or cold sensitivity and like lingering hot and cold sensitivity, um, pressure pain, if you're chewing and it hurts, if there's a fracture in the tooth. So usually if you're biting on something and that tooth hurts, there could be a fracture in it course gross decay if there's a large amount of decay that has reached the nerve of the tooth then you would need a root canal if you go to a dentist and you're not having any symptoms with a tooth I would be weary of getting a root canal unless he shows you an x-ray which I'll try to find one and post one here here that shows you that there's an infection on that tooth which when they take an x-ray of your tooth at the bottom of the tooth underneath the root there'll be a little bit of like a dark shadow and that could mean that there's possible infection with that tooth. Now, I'm not saying to call your dentist a liar if you don't have any of this stuff and say you don't need a root canal. I personally would just get a second opinion. And you can always do that. Um, you don't even have to tell your dentist about it if you don't want to. But you could schedule a consultation with a root canal specialist, see what they have to say, ask another dentist. Um, because root canals can be very expensive, especially if you don't have insurance. And that's a lot of money for them to make and just say that you need a root canal if you don't really need it. So if you aren't having symptoms, if there's no infection shown on the x-ray, definitely go get a second opinion. Now, something else people have said that they paid for that they didn't really need is crowns. So if you've had a root canal on a tooth, we always recommend to put a crown on it because a root canal actually weakens the tooth. 
they are more receptacle to fractures. So we always recommend a crown on a tooth. Now, if you don't have a root canal on a tooth and a dentist recommends a crown, they might recommend it because there's a fracture or aesthetic reasons, but that's up to you at that point. If they say there's a fracture on that tooth, you should have some kind of symptom. You should have pain when biting down or pain when eating or pain when you put pressure on the tooth because fractures don't always show up in x-rays. So sometimes they're just an enamel fracture or a dentin fracture. Sometimes there's pulp involvement, sometimes they're not. So you could always wait for symptoms or again, get a second opinion. But if you ever get any swelling or notice that you're having pain when chewing, then yes, your tooth might have a fracture and you might need a crown. Also things that I hear a lot, and I think it's ways for private dentists to make money, placing amalgam fillings with composite. There's no need to do that. And I know people wanna do it for aesthetic reasons, which you can if you want to, um, but if you go to a private office and the dentist says, oh, all these amalgam fillings need to be replaced with composite. Why? Amalgam filling, granted, people feel a lot of different ways about them, they're the strongest filling material that we have. So unless it's fractured or there's decay underneath it, there's no need to replace them. No need whatsoever. And if they do replace them, they're gonna have to remove more tooth structure to put a composite filling in there. Because every time you get a filling, you have to remove more tooth structure to get that filling to stick to the tooth. So there's no reason to replace amalgam fillings. Unless you want to, then that's totally up to you. But you can say no. You can just say, no, that's okay. I'd rather not. Um, they might try to convince you that they're unhealthy or whatever, but, and again, that's your choice. But I hear that's a really common thing when people go to private offices is dentists would be like, oh, let's replace all these old fillings with composite. No, you don't need to. You really don't. <laughs> they're fine. I promise. Um, also a way that they try to get money is to do in-office bleaching. Now, I am someone that's really not for bleaching your teeth. And I know people watching this video I'm like, well, that's because you have white teeth. And I've never bleached my teeth. I don't, I don't bleach my teeth. I just use a whitening toothpaste that has some fluoride in it, like a couple times a week if I want to, or once a week, just to help keep my teeth, you know, get the stains off there, the surface stains. I am a coffee drinker and whatnot, but I don't bleach my teeth. I feel that it weakens your teeth. It removes enamel. And enamel is the hard part of your tooth. And if you over bleach your teeth, you're going to expose more dentin or it's gonna make your enamel thinner. That's how you get wire teeth, is enamel being removed from your teeth. It's removing layers of enamel. So with that being said, if you weaken the enamel, the hard part of your tooth, you're more skeptical to decay. I don't want decay, so I just use a whitening toothpaste at my home. And I know some people have worse staining than I do. Some people's teeth stain really bad. And I totally understand that. So I would recommend getting like crest white strips, you know, things with a lower dosage of bleaching. Honestly, if you do it within an office, it is fairly expensive. Usually it's three to $400. They usually only bleach canine forward, you know, your smile line. So it's usually just canine up, that's it. They, they don't bleach your back teeth, which I understand that's not in your smile line, but it, so they're literally only bleaching while your canine up, so 12 teeth. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's just my personal opinion though. Wisdom teeth. A lot of people have it in their heads that you have to get your wisdom teeth extracted. That is not the case. You don't have to get your wisdom teeth extracted. I sold my wisdom teeth. Um, and it's not because I had ortho because I had all my ortho removed and I didn't get my wisdom teeth until I was like 21 ish, 22. And then they started to grow in. So if your wisdom teeth don't grow in, you don't have to get them removed. If they're not causing any issue, if there's no infection, if they do grow in, you don't have to get them removed. The only time you have to get wisdom teeth extracted is if there's an infection, if you're getting decay on them because they're hard to clean. So maybe if they're like partially impacted, like that just the top is out. Sometimes it's hard to keep clean if there's like a flap of gum over the top of it. Um, but if they grow in sideways, you don't have to get them extracted. They're not gonna make your other teeth push forward. They're not gonna crowd your teeth. A lot of people think that too, it's not gonna happen. Only if there's infection or if they're hard to keep clean, then get them extracted. 
but some dentists just want to rip out wisdom teeth because honestly it's a money maker they can make some money on pulling out some wisdom teeth you don't always have to get them pulled out if you're not having any pain if there's no infection if you're able to keep them clean if they're impacted and not even above the gum line you don't have to get them extracted we have so many patients come in too, like just parents with their children. Their kids are like 16, 17 and they come in and they're like, oh, my kid's starting to get their wisdom teeth. So we need to get these out. Like, why? You don't have to put your kid through this. Like see how they grow in. They're not having any pain. There's no infection. There's no swelling. And then we take an x-ray and like one's a little bit sideways and the parent's like, get it out of there. It's going to mess up their whole entire mouth. And it's not. When a tooth grows, so when a tooth forms in the mouth, the crown actually forms first and then the roots develop. So you're not, people picture like it developing from the roots up and then that's what pushes the teeth forward. I promise you it doesn't. The crown develops first and everything else grows downward. So it's not pushing those teeth together. I know it feels like it, I know there's weird pressure, but it's really not happening. My teeth, I had ortho, straight teeth, and then I had my ortho removed, I think, when I was like 16, 15. I didn't get my wisdom teeth until I was 21. It did not push my teeth forward at all. My teeth are exactly the same. I promise you, it does not crowd your teeth, okay? So those are the most common ways I've heard a private dentist trying to get more money. And all I can say is if you go and see a dentist and you're not comfortable with what he's saying or you're doubting what he's saying to you and there's not proof of it on an x-ray or you're not having symptoms, it's okay to get a second opinion on something. I mean, you don't have to be mean to the dentist or, you know, say he's lying or anything like that, but it's okay to get a second opinion because as someone that has been there that had no dental knowledge that totally trusted my dentist, finding out years later that he basically charged me full price fillings for some sealants, <laughs> <laughs> it's scary because you you are trusting this person and you're like okay yeah do whatever you want I trust you and then you can turn out and it's not something that you really need so yes those are the most common things that I've heard from patients or from friends that they feel that they didn't really need so just be wary of that and get a second opinion but yes I hope you guys found this video helpful and please leave comments down below if you have any experiences like this or your opinion on it and yeah, well, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.